Hello learners, before I take up part 3 of this lesson, this is Jodi's phone. Let me brief up part 1 and part 2. Jodi's father was bitten by a rattlesnake. In order to save his father, he killed a doe and used its heart and liver to remove the poison. Jodi was always in thoughts of what would happen to the little fawn, which is left alone in the forest. He is not able to get out of his thoughts, so he decided to bring it home and keep it as a pet. He makes his parents realize that it was their responsibility to take care of the fawn as they killed the doe. He took his parents' permission and went with Millwheel to find fawn in the forest. Jody wanted Millwheel to go back. He wanted to search the fawn by himself. There were two reasons for this. The first one is that if he did not find the fawn or the fawn had uh, been eaten by other animals, he did not want Millwheel to see his disappointment. And secondly, if he met the fawn, he wanted to have the meeting with the fawn to be very lovely and secret. He would not like to share with anyone else. Jody assured Millwheel not to get worried about him and that he would be careful in the forest while searching the fawn. So, Millwheel went back leaving Jody in the forest. Now, let us read part 3 and find out whether Jody meets the fawn or not. Now, let's start part 3 reading and we'll know the word meanings and also I'll explain you parawise. Right? Part 3 Movement directly in front of him startled him so that he tumbled back. Startled is surprised and tumbled is to fall or fell. The fawn lifted its face to his. It turned its head with a wide, wandering motion and shook him through with the stare of its liquid eyes. It was quivering. Quivering is shaking slightly. It made no effort to rise or run. Jody could not trust himself to move. He whispered, It's me. The fawn lifted its nose, scenting him. Scenting is smelling. He reached out one hand and laid it on the soft neck. The touch made him delirious. Delirious is extremely excited. He moved forward on all fours until he was close beside it. He put his arms around its body. A light convulsion passed over it, but it did not stir. Convulsion is shiver and stir is move. Now let us see the explanation of these two paragraphs. Jody was searching for the fawn in the forest. Then suddenly there was some movement in front of him which surprised him and he fell back. It was the fawn. The fawn lifted its face to see Jody and stared at him with its liquid eyes. The fawn was shaking slightly. It sat still, made no effort to run. Jody could not move. Two, uh, but whispered lightly, It's me. The fawn lifted his nose to smell Jody. Jody reached out with his hands and laid it on the, on the fawn's soft neck. Then his touch made the fawn excited. He was on all fours on the ground that was on his knees and palms. He moved towards till he was close to the fawn. Then he put his arms around the fawn which made the fawn shiver slightly but it did not move as it was comfortable with Jody's touch. He stroked its sides as gently as though the fawn was a china deer and he might break it. A china deer is a clay deer that is easily broken. Its skin was very soft. It was sleek and clean and had a sweet scent of grass. 
sleek is smooth and shiny he rose slowly and lifted the fawn from the ground its legs hung limply limply is lacking stiffness they were surprisingly long and he had to hoist the fawn as high as possible under his arm now we'll see its explanation jody stroked the sides of the fawn very gently as if the fawn was a china deer and he might break it the fawn was very soft sleek clean and also had a sweet scent of grass jody lifted the fawn from the ground its legs were quite long and jody had to hold the fawn as high as possible under his arm he was afraid that it might kick and bleat at sight and smell of its mother he skirted the clearing and pushed his way into the thicket skirted is avoided pushed his way is made his way and thicket is dense bushes it was difficult to fight through with his burden the fawn's legs caught in the bushes and he could not lift his own with freedom he tried to shield its face from prickling vines shield is protect and vines are these are creepers its head bobbed with his stride bobbed is moved up and down stride is walked his heart thumped with the marvel of its acceptance of him thumped is beat fast marvelous surprise he reached the trail and walked as fast as he could until he came to the intersection with the road home here trail is a narrow path as in a forest and intersection is the crossroads he stopped to rest and set the fawn down on its dangling legs dangling is hanging it wavered on them wavered is unsteady it looked at him and bleated bleated is the weak or wavering cry made by a sheep goat or calf so here the wavering cry of the fawn now let us see the explanation of this paragraph jody feared that the fawn uh, if it sees its mother's carcass that is the dead body it might kick and bleed him so he avoided the clearing and made his way into the bushes it was a difficult walk as he was carrying the fawn the the fawn's legs were caught in the bushes and he could not move freely jody tried to protect the fawn's face from the prickling creepers as jody walked through the dense forest the fawn's head was moving jody was excited as the fawn accepted him it was a long walk as he reached the narrow path as fast as he could until he came to crossroad which led to his home he was very tired so he stopped to rest he put the fawn down on its legs but the fawn was shivering as it was very weak the fawn looked at jody and made a wavering cry he said enchanted enchanted is charmed in happiness i will carry you after i get my breath he remembered his father saying that a fawn would follow if it had first been carried he started away slowly the fawn stared after him he came back to it and stroked it and walked away again it took a few wobbling steps here wobbling is shaky towards him and cried piteously piteously is with pity it was willing to follow him it belonged to him it was his own he was light headed with his joy light headed is unable to think clearly he wanted to fondle it to run and romp with it to call to it to come to him so here fondle is to hug romp is play he did not alarm it alarm is frightened he picked it up 
and carried it in front of him over his two arms. It seemed to him that he walked without effort. Now let us see the explanation of this paragraph. Jodi was charmed. He was happy that he found the fawn and he was taking it home. He was tired of carrying in his arms. He stopped to rest and set the fawn down. The fawn looked at Jodi and bleated. Jodi said, I will carry you after I get my breath. He remembered his father saying that a fawn would follow if it had first been carried. So he started slowly. At first the fawn did not move. The fawn stared after him. So he came back to the fawn and stroked it gently and walked. The fawn took a few shaky steps and cried with pity. It was willing to follow Jodi. It belonged, it belonged to Jodi. Jodi felt happy to see the fawn following him because it was his fawn. He was joyful. He wanted to hug it, run and play with it and also he wanted to call it to come to him. But he did not dare to frighten the fawn. As Jodi was very happy to see the fawn which was following him, he picked it up again in his arms. So now he started walking without any effort because he was overwhelmed with the joy that the fawn belonged to him and it was willing to follow him. His arms began to ache, ache is pain, and he was forced to stop again. When he walked on, the fawn followed him at once. He allowed it to walk a little distance, then picked it up again. The distance home was nothing. He could have walked all day and into the night, carrying it and watching it follow. He was wet with sweat, but a light breeze blew through the June morning, cooling him. The sky was as clear as spring water in a blue china cup. He came to the clearing. It was fresh and green after the night's rain. He fumbled with the latch and was finally obliged to set down the fawn to manage it. Fumble means to handle something clumsily and obliged is kampal. Then he had an idea. He would walk into the house, into Penny's bedroom, with the fawn walking behind him. But at the steps, the fawn barked and refused to climb them. Barked means unwilling to do something. He picked it up and went to his father. Penny lay with closed eyes. Jody called, Pa, look. Now let us see its explanation. Jody's arms began to ache and he stopped again. The fawn followed him. Jody allowed the fawn to walk a few steps and then picked it up again. The distance to his home was near. He could have walked day and night carrying the fawn and watching it to follow. But he was tired and sweating. A light breeze blew which cooled him on that June morning. The sky was so clear that it had been compared to spring water in a blue china cup. He reached the clearing which was fresh and green after the night's rain. He came near his house. It was difficult to open the latch of the door with the fawn in his hands. So he was compelled to set the fawn down. He had an idea to make the fawn follow him to his father's bedroom. He wanted to surprise Penny, but the fawn refused to climb the steps. So, Jody had to pick it up to his father's bedroom. His father was resting with closed eyes. Jody called out, Pa, look at him. Now, we'll move on to the next paragraph. Penny turned his head. Jody stood beside him. The fawn clutched hard against him. Here, clutched hard is held a tight grip. 
It seemed to Penny that the boy's eyes were as bright as the fawn's. He said, I am glad you found him. Jody then went to the kitchen. The fawn wobbled after him. A pan of morning's milk stood in the kitchen safe. The cream had risen on it. He skimmed the cream into a jug. Skimmed is remove the surface or remove the cream. He poured milk into a small gourd. Gourd is a container for liquid. He held it out to the fawn. It buttered it suddenly. Buttered is hit with the head. Smelling the milk, he saved it precariously from spilling over the floor. Precariously is likely to fall or collapse. Spilling over is falling on the ground. It could not, it could make nothing of the milk in the gourd. Here, now let's see the explanation of these two paragraphs. Penny woke up and turned his head towards Jody. Jody stood beside his father with the fawn which held him firmly. Penny saw Jody's eyes that were as bright as the fawn's. He expressed his happiness saying that Jody was able to find the fawn. Jody went to the kitchen and the fawn followed him with his weak steps. In the kitchen, a pan of morning's milk was stored safe. The cream formed on the milk and that cream was removed by Jody into a jet. He poured the milk into a small gourd or the container and held it out to the fawn. The fawn hit it with its head suddenly and smelled it. Jody caught hold of the gourd carefully from spilling over the floor. The fawn could not drink the milk on its own. He dipped his fingers in the milk and thrust them into the fawn's soft wet mouth. It sucked greedily. When he withdrew it, it bleated frantically and buttered him. Frantically is crazily. He dipped his fingers again and as the fawn sucked, he lowered them slowly into the milk. Now let us see its explanation. When the fawn was unable to drink the milk from the gourd, Jody dipped his fingers in the milk and put them in its soft wet mouth. The fawn sucked the milk greedily. When J Jody removed his fingers, the fawn bleated and pushed Jody. He again dipped his fingers to feed the fawn. When the fawn was sucking, he lowered it so as to bring it near the gourd. The fawn blew and sucked and snorted. Snorted is made a sound of breath through its nose. It stamped its small hooves impatiently. As long as he held his fingers below the level of the milk, the fawn was content. Content means satisfied as it was drinking the milk. It closed its eyes dreamily. It was ecstasy to feel its tongue against his hand. Its small tail flicked back and forth. The last of the milk vanished in a swirl of foam and gurgling. Ecstasy is joyful excitement. So here, now let us see its explanation. The fawn blew the milk as he sucked it and made sound in happiness. It enjoyed sucking the milk. And in happiness, this fawn, it stamped its small hooves impatiently. The fawn was calm till Jody kept his fingers inside the milk and he drank with eyes closed in satisfaction. Now, Jody was very much excited when the fawn touched his fingers to suck milk. The fawn flicked its tail back and forth in happiness. The last drop of the milk also disappeared by forming foam and also with the gurgling sound. This showed the excitement of the fawn to suck the milk. Now, I hope you all have understood the summary of part 1 and part 2 and the explanation part of, part of this part 3, right? Now, uh, what does this particular lesson talks about? Yes. 
so all that it talks about is that it's not fair to kill an animal and use its parts to cure right so one should have pity or we should show pity love and kind towards the animals is this clear children i hope you all have understood thank you